conflict. Chapter 15 Pandora and Atrus had barely calmed the crowd down from their excitement and just begun the treatment again before Pandora picked up another incident. Atrus, since your battle with the Cymurg was broadcast all over the world the Fallen have watched it as well and are going berserk over the death of their goddess she said blandly. They called the guild to help out as well as Dragon can get there pretty quick, I'll be sending in drones and two of my smaller spacecrafts to help them transport the prisoners. Do you want to personally intervene, she asked him to which he shook his head. They aren't worth the time or the effort for me to be there, this is more of a situation where you can help with your numbers. To power any para human and get cybans on any of the brainwashed victims, they are known to kidnap a lot of people so they'll definitely need yours and Dragon's help in getting those people to their homes he commented as she nodded and sent commands to the drones and crafts to reach and subdue their targets. Scottsboro, Alabama The camp of the three families that made up the Fallen were going in an absolute blind rage, all of their numbers running out of the camp attacking the city cursing out to the devil from the stars for killing their benevolent goddess. Fortunately the police and the heroes of the city were avoiding any confrontation and getting the civilians out letting the cult damage the property. When the powered members of the Fallen arrived the destruction increased by twofold as they went around using their powers without any care destroying anything in sight. When they started to target the evacuating civilians the few heroes of the place stayed back to attract their attention. Before anybody got killed drones and two large spaceships appeared from a portal above the sky, and another portal opened way for the guild and dragon's various tech to come through. The cult got even madder knowing who the spacecrafts and portals belonged to but it was futile. The unpowered members fell by the droves to all the non-lethal weapons the guild and the PRT employed. The powered members did their best to target Pandora's tech which was a wasted effort as these things were made to survive the harness of space itself, almost nothing these para-humans did could affect it. They were all quickly subdued and slapped with cybans that depowered them all instantly. Pandora got the cult leaders of the families, especially Mama Mathers who was a very powerful master and anti-thinker who could even affect through technology but it was useless as long as Pandora was the using the tech. The guild and the PRT got working on sending the prisoners to be processed and jailed while Pandora's drones got working on helping the brainwashed and the kidnapping victims, putting down one of the most numbered and dangerous villain group in the world in a matter of minutes. It had been two days since the press conference and the death of the Cymurg. Every single site the Cymurg had visited and made any victims that were treated and put under government watch to make sure the people are properly treated. The next group of the list of Pandora and Atrus were the Grey Boy victims, stuck in an unending time loop reliving their agony over and over again. Ava and Tess were extremely pleased to find out that we could pop his time bubbles which we could achieve by our advancements in gravity, space, and time specializations. There were quite a few of these time bubble when the guy was active and since nobody could really pop them they have remained here for all this time. The media once again caught on to this and made a huge deal about it parading it around the world and attracting people by the droves which had started to irritate Atrus and Ava who was there to take care of the official work needing Tess to send out a lot of drones to manage the crowd. One by one the time bubbles all over the country were popped and the victims were given immediate treatment by Pandora to prevent them from dying due to shock. They were taken to spacecraft called from the Mars base which contained a lot of advanced medical tech as neither Atrus or Pandora wanted to take people to the bases and have people snoop around there. Ava had noticed that every time the PRT or the Protectorate, Especially the Triumvirate tried to set up a meeting with Atrus and Pandora the two of them brushed it away saying that they had work to do or anything else in the similar vein. Guys, the PRT wants you both to deal with Nilbog and his creations at Ellisbug, there will be plenty of heroes and agents from the PRT, Legend, and Alexandria of the Triumvirate will definitely show up as well she paused as she gave them both a searching look. I noticed that other than the guild you both really don't care to establish contact with any other hero group or agency, and you both have done everything to avoid not only the PRT but also the protectorate at every turn. Has something happened? Did they do something to earn your ire? Tell me about it, maybe I can solve it for you she implored as Tess to gave them both a questioning look. 
Atrus and Pandora shared a look between them and then Atrus nodded, let's go back to your HQ right now, this is not the place to talk about these things. If you want to you can call in the rest of the members of the team as well, Thins affects everyone he said with a straight face worrying the women of the guild. Once the portal to the office of the guild HQ was opened and everyone settled down, Tess quickly called the members to assemble the Ava's office and shut the entire floor down for security reasons. Seeing the tense atmosphere in the office even usually lively Olivia had a serious face. Pandora then spread her nonites around the room creating a whole new dimension around it saying now we can talk, nothing spoken or done here can be tracked by anything or anyone. Ava said with a cautioned look guys you are scaring us with all the extra steps you are taking to have this conversation. Is everything alright? She asked as the others nodded along wanting to know just why a whole new dimension was created for this talk. To get to the topic of why I don't want to bother with the PRT, Protectorate, and specifically Alexandria, we must begin at the root of the topic. Even though it might seem all over the place and bare with the two of us, you will understand the truth of the world once we finish explaining things to you. A truce started. Tell me. Do you know how exactly the humans of this earth got their para-human abilities? He asked an age-old question that there was no real answer to. Ethan gave the evolution theory and Miles told about the powers from being exposed to stress theory. Tess tossed some of the more obscure and not well-known theory but both Atrus and Pandora simply listened to them without saying anything. After the members understood that their hypothesis are all wrong then quietened down. Pandora began with a very somber tone in this universe exists a species that we both and the people who know about it have simply named the entities. These being are a race of multidimensional race of creatures that grow up to incomprehensible sizes. They consist of trillions of trillions of trillions of fragments known as shards, these shards are all capable of performing a plethora of functions and have a lot of powers of their own which the entities keep limited. What the entities do is, they choose a host planet and spread throughout the realities of that world, encompassing the parallel worlds all at the same time. Once that is done they spread their shards amongst the population of the species when they have reached the most lowest point in their lives, giving them a connection with a shard that allows them a very specific set of abilities which all have an effect of altering the minds of their hosts and making them more prone to conflict Pandora paused as she saw the paling faces of her friends. Most of them looked nauseous at the very thought of what they heard. Atrus continued the explanation once these host receive powers and the conflict drive is engaged they record the actions of these host and send it back to the entities. They record everything from new ways of using the powers, interaction between different powers and the technology of the host world to incorporate into their learning to give to future hosts in the form of a very restricted form of power. Tess interrupted when she whispered tinkers out loud, she looked at the two with fear on her face as she said that's why we can't mass produce tinker tech reliably isn't it? Why even the tinkers don't know what they are building she finished quietly as the rest understood what she meant looking at her in pity. Pandora nodded and said when you go into a tinker fugue it is the shard is augmenting the tech in a way that the host doesn't understand but ultimately the goal of the shards is to collect data from various conflicts so you'll never find a tinker who can just stay in their labs and build along all day, if you're actively try to go against your shards they will punish you by sabotaging your work. Is that what happens to Leet of Brockton Bay? I've seen a few of his live streams and noticed that compared to other tinkers his work fails a lot more Olivia asked seriously to which Pandora nodded. Good, you are all understanding now. That is Leet's shard actively sabotaging him because it doesn't like the way he going on. It wants to kill him right now to latch on to another host to renew its observation process she finished gravely. Oh my god, it makes too much sense. Give broken people powers and egg them to conflict to collect more data, that's why trigger events only happen when you're at your lowest point. This is all so weird Liam whispered as he covered his face with his hands lowering the mood of the room even further. This is simply the cycle as its beginning, which is the stage you are in right now, over time every single human across all the earths of this universe will receive a shard upon which the cycle will reach its last stages. 
When this happens the entities will take back their shards killing all the humans across all the earths in one go and move on to another world to spread to Atrus told them in very grave tone which had all of them look ill. Killing every single human across all the earths was something they couldn't even picture, they had barely discovered a few earths with the help of Tinkertech which means the entities were already there as well. Just what do these things want? Why go through with all this Ethan asked in a simmering rage. Their end goal as far as we understood is the progress and evolution of themselves like any other species and the answer to the question of entropy. They fear death, especially the death of the universe, so they try to find ways to survive this by collecting and putting data together from n number of species to allow their race to survive Pandora answered to them. This is first time I've seriously hated my powers and this damn parasite linked to my brain Olivia muttered dejectedly. Atrus, Pandora, you both can do something right? I'll help in any way I can but please tell me that you do something about these monsters Ava begged them both to which they both nodded and Pandora reassured her. We have been searching the dimension in which the entity of this cycle is hidden and are very close to breakthrough. Once we find its real body it's a matter of using the right weapon to kill it once and for all she stated firmly as everybody took in a breath of relief. Do we know who it is? Have they ever personally appeared on this earth or any other earth? Tess asked them getting a nod from Atrus, who turned to look at Ava asking her. Do you remember who you compared me to when we both first met? He questioned her as horror dawned on her face. No, this. I but the evidence has always been there, that's why you told me that other than the scope of your powers you had nothing in common with him she whispered as Tess remembered the conversation and exclaimed frightfully. Sion. They all were shocked to know that their true enemy was also their greatest savior, the first hero, the golden man who saved kittens and orphans is an alien who is going to kill them all eventually. It all makes sense, it was only after Sion's arrival that para-humans started appearing. That guy is mocking us by flying around saving people. Ethan cried out in anger and continued before you killed the Ziz yesterday we used to pray and hope that during Endbringer fights Sion would come and drive them away before too many people died, and to think he is the bastard behind all this in the first place he finished gritting his teeth. I don't understand Atrus, Pandora, why does he do hero work at all? He's going to kill us anyway right? Questioned Liam to which Pandora nodded and said. What you see is an avatar of the entity to interact with the world around him. Now we are coming to the reason for our distaste with your PRT and protectorate. You see the cycle on Earth was supposed to have two entities, but something went wrong and this cycle has been thrown off course by a lot, giving you all a very rare opportunity to fight the entities even if Atrus and I hadn't been thrown to this reality. And somebody took up this fight for the humanity of all the earth she paused as she saw the hope rise up on her friends' faces, she shook her head at having to crush those dreams. Unfortunately the organization that has taken up the fight is really not any better than the entities themselves. We ran the numbers and the future prediction to see what would have happened if hadn't landed here. You all would survived by the skin of your teeth having sacrificed billions across multiple Earth and it would forced you all to leave Earth but ultimately she finished as she saw the hope in their eyes get crushed and anger take its place. Just what happened to this cycle? And which organization is this? Ava asked in subdued tone. This cycle had two entities whom we will call Eden and Zion, as they made their way to Earth the meta third entity which we are calling Abaddon. Abaddon and Eden exchanged shards with each other after which they went their separate ways and the two headed towards Earth, Atrus told them the story of how Eden met her untimely death, who killed her and how the setup of Cauldron as an organization truly began with the woman called Dr. Mother at its helm. You see on this Earth there are two ways to get powers, one is through the natural trigger process which we explained to you and other is by purchasing Cauldron vials man-made extractions of the dead shards of Eden which Kin bought at a huge price tag, Pandora explained to them the modus operandi of the organization, its influence on the world and what and all it has been involved in. She presented them with hard light screens which were taken from various cauldron servers to help prove their existence to the guild members. The data was forwarded to Dragon so that she could save it. 
All members gathered here saw their faces changing from filled with despair to filled with absolute loathing towards Cauldron as they went through everything the organization did. The Case 53S, Greyboy, Fairy Queen, Helping the S9 and Other Villains, The Nemesis Program, Social Engineering, Killing and Kidnapping People from Other Earths to Aid Their Production of C-53S and More Ava whispered with anger in her tone as she clenched her fists hard. And the Triumvirate were at the center of it all, the bastards were manipulating us all this time to fight against Zion by throwing numbers at him she finished with a sorrowful laugh. It would have never worked. They should have taken the opportunity to find out the most important powers accidentally given out in this cycle or from the dead shards and put their efforts into finding the true body Zion and killing him, but you already know what they're up to and how they work now Pandora said shaking her head in regret. We need to get the PRT out of our country and stop associating with these sick bastards boss. Let's screen all our agents as well for moles Olivia said angrily to which Atrus shook his head. As much as I dislike the PRT and the protectorate they are necessary for the public as a whole. The villains still outnumber the heroes in the world and weakening the strongest hero-based organization in the world will not help anybody. You can do with this information what you like, I just wanted you to understand why I didn't want to associate with these people for all this time but the ultimate decision is yours he said as they both got up. We'll take our leave, let you all decide amongst yourselves as to what you want to do. You can the PRT know that me and Pandora will take care of Nilbog tomorrow after which I'll drop by Russia to take care of Sleeper, ending all the S-class threats on Earth bet. This will be the last help I will provide outside dealing of with Endbringers and Zion in terms of taking out harmful elements that ruin society and will not change their path in any way he paused. The only other help we will be providing is by helping you all with the knowledge exchange. This way you won't be dependent on us for all your problems and will still grow in the face of adversity and deal with your issues rather than waiting for someone to save. I'll see you all tomorrow, farewell he wished as he left alongside Pandora to their base leaving the guild alone. What do we do Ava? This is will cause catastrophe if we truly spread this out. The public will never trust in heroes knowing just what goes on behind the scenes and villains will take advantage of it to cause chaos Tess stopped as she saw a pensive look on everyone's faces. Let Nilbog and Sleeper get taken care of tomorrow, we have the list of people who bought the bloody vials, the villains will definitely be put away. People like this coil deserve to be thrown into the birdcage with kind of things they have pulled Ava spoke with a serious tone. I'll call for a meet with the heroes of the Protectorate and let everybody know of this conspiracy taking place behind our backs. We will definitely need Pandora's help in healing the case 53 patients and sending them back to their homes, and this thinker 12 called Contessa needs to get under the control of people who can use her abilities for the actual good of the people she stopped as she sighed. One thing is for certain. The Triumvirate will be stepping down from leadership positions and Alexandria will stop fooling us by playing the double role of the PRT chief director as well she said glaring at the photo of both Alexandria and Rebecca Costa Brown side by side. Tess, please invite every hero regardless of their involvement with the Protectorate or not weekend to the gathering at Ellisbug, please contact Strider and other teleporters to help these heroes move, the guild will bear the expense for this. We'll let everybody know what we have learned here today and come to decision as a team she finished resolutely as everyone around her nodded in acceptance. Ellisbug, New York It was the day of the attack on Ellisbug, as a mass of heroes gathered around the quarantine site wondering what their roles were here as Atrus could easily deal with something like this by himself. But Dragon had made it sound very serious in her invitation and the guild even had teleporters paid to help taxi them so everybody waited. Besides they all wanted to see the strongest person to exist on Earth bet at least once with their own eyes as well. Everybody was waiting for something big to happen as Narwhal was standing to side with a very serious expression on her face just like the other guild members, tipping them that it was a serious meeting. From the skies above Atrus and Pandora descended as everybody watched on, flying right above the quarantine site Q4 as they discussed amongst themselves. Pandora noted with amusement look at that, he's got a puppet acting in his stead to fool the people who might want to attack at him. 
he's got enough of a common sense to know that what he's done here will gain him notoriety with the a government that had a love for explosions of nuclear proportions, if he parades around with no caution then they might take a shot on him or send in other capes to deal with him, but as long as there is a chance of him getting some bioweapon outside this site they'll wait and watch the scene Atrus said observing the real body of Nilbog deep below the earth. Unfortunately for him it doesn't matter to us where he hides, let's get this over with. You have the exchange starting off and I need to go after the sleeper after this one to which she nodded and surrounded at entire site with a huge spherical force field that enclosed the real body of Nilbog within it. Atrus remembered a special attack of a character he saw in his previous life and concentrated gravitational energy in a vortex and launched in the center of the city, pulling everything within it as the monster denizens of Elisbog cried out to their king to save them, only for him to be in the same boat as them. The huge sphere of earth, concrete and biological matter floated above the gigantic crater where Elisbog was situated before, compressing more and more till it was the size of a tiny meteorite. The heroes, journalists, and everyone else watched his fascination and horror as the one of the most dangerous villains to exist was crushed alongside his kingdom in a few seconds. Atrus the willed an orb of energy which collided with the sphere and destroyed it completely from the face of the earth. Pandora checked for any biological matter left behind by Nilbog and had her nonites devour them as she nodded knowing that this area was clean and lowered the force field round the area. Atrus used molecular manipulation to fill up the crater with matter converted from energy so that people could use this land again. As Atrus and Pandora were winding up their business in Ellisbeg Alexandria, not wanting to miss the chance flew up to the two of them with Legend and Idolan trailing behind her. She began with a pleasant tone Atrus, Pandora, as a founding member of the Protectorate I would like to thank you for helping our world as much as you have to which both of them simply nodded. Seeing that the two had nothing to say she carried on, I'm extremely grateful that you both have decided to help us in advancing our world as a whole with the knowledge from your universe as well. I wanted to invite you two so that we may reach a better understanding amongst each other and figure out ways to help the people of the world even more going forward she finished as Legend smiled behind her and Idolan had a very awkward stance as he tried to look elsewhere but kept sending glances to the two of them. Atrus sighed as he pinched the bridge of his nose in exasperation he told you don't have to bother, I already know what you want to really talk about and I'm not interested in it. You can go over it with Narwhal he pointed who was flying towards them with an angry look on her face. What do you mean you already know what we want to talk about? Idolan asked in a suspicious manner as Alexandria had a really bad feeling about where this conversation was going and Legend looked in a clueless manner trying to figure out what was going on. Atrus simply looked at them with a cool face as he said. I already know about Cauldron since the day I came here, after all finding out such organizations was on the top of my priority after being kicked here, I also know about the truth of the Golden One and his kind and am preparing to deal with him so please don't bother with that either. The guild members know it as they were informed yesterday about it, so please have this conversation with them he said as he turned around and flew off towards Russia as Pandora shook her head and sent a drone to Tess who had requested it and left via a portal to carry on with her work. Vitam, Siberia Flying above the skies of the tributary of the river Lena, Vitam, Atrus could see a rainbow-colored storm slowly make its way westwards. In the middle of the storm was a large and well-built Russian man who similar to the Ash Beast was kept in a good condition by his shard. The sleeper was able to take control of any matter his power came in contact with and subvert to serving him in any way he desired. When he came closer to cities and settlements people were controlled and turned into matter storms as he passed by. The sleeper noticed him and expanded the range of his storm which couldn't penetrate the field that covered his body not allowing the shard's influence to reach his being and kill him in seconds. Atrus used his psychokinesis to take control of the atoms in the area and remove them from the subversion of the sleeper. Shocked by his first failure the S-Class tried to use even more power to try and warp his surroundings but it didn't work. Atrus held the threat down with immense telekinetic force trapping him as he closed his eyes and concentrated deeply. This was the first time he was using this against a live target and didn't want to mess up. He distort the very space-time continuum around a very small distance right in front of the sleeper with great effort. 
The attack rent the sleeper and reached all the way to the shard space tearing the shard apart and killing it as well. Atrus was panting in exhaustion as head ached a little due to the sheer amount of power that went behind that honestly tiny attack, but messing space-time was still not in his grasp. His suit slowly slithered up to his head releasing soothing sigh waves which settled his headache. This took way too long to begin, even though it attacked regardless of space and time the charge up time is too long to be considered a weapon against the entities who will do everything to get away from such an attack. We'll need to improve on this he said wistfully as he flew away thinking of ways to improve his attack, leaving the sight of the last S-class para-human to exist on Earth other than the end bringers. In Ellisbeg things were beginning to get heated as the heroes who were called for the meeting were finally learning the truths of the world. Ellisbeg, New York A large temporary structure had been set up to accommodate the heroes who had come to attend the meeting called by Narwhal and Dragon out of the blue. Despite having seen Atrus do something completely unheard of before their eyes the people did not fail not to notice his reaction when he met the triumvirate. The fact that he took off only a few seconds after they tried to talk to him, Narwhal flying at the triumvirate with a pissed off look and just how still and robotic Alexandria has looked ever since she flew down were signs that this meeting is not going to end well for some people. Before Atrus and Pandora came to this world it was the triumvirate people held hope in, they took the lead in all the Endbringer fights, they established the protectorate and acted as a beacon for the masses to follow. Seeing the current most powerful person shaking his head and fly away from them upset a lot of people but they were willing to wait and find out what was going on. Once everyone got settled Dragon asked Pandora's drone to secure the place and the drone projected some kind of a force field around the place. Now that this place is secure I would like to bring to all of attention some very important facts that been kept hidden from us for far too long Narwhal started with a serious expression. Dragon's drone started to pass around data pads that had files preloaded on it. I want you all to go through the files on the devices. They are from a clandestine organization called Cauldron Narwhal announced as she saw many heroes flinch at the name, some looking around as if expecting something to happen. The ones who know about it don't have to wait for Doormaker's portals to open here, we requested Pandora to provide her with a drone that has created a pocket dimension within this force field so that nobody can interrupt us during this meeting she continued narrowing her eyes on the heroes who showed their reactions to the name. After the heroes gathered went through the data provided all hell broke loose. The independents were shouting at everyone saying that they had a feeling a conspiracy was afoot. The lower-ranked heroes were looking at the leadership in distrust as the top heroes were glaring at the triumvirate. Legend was paling at what he read, looking at his friends in disbelief, shock and betrayal as Alexandria and Idolan stood stock still not knowing how to proceed. Dragon led a warning from one of her drones to stop the shouting. I know that what we read is beyond what any of us thought would be possible for our founders to do, but playing the blame game and shouting is not helping us here. We shared this with everybody so that we would not be making the same mistakes as them Dragon said in stern voice as she continued. But we also didn't share this to expose some conspiracy and throw the system down. We did this so that we have a chance to change things for the better as a team. You all still need to remember that despite the deaths of all the S-class threat the villains still outnumber the heroes in the world. Do you really want to splinter off at a time like this? she asked cooling the crowd down as they went silent and truly thought about the consequences of some of their suggestions they shouted out. Just how did you find out all this information? Going by the data provided they have bases in alternative Earths and have infected the system since the beginning. Did they slip somewhere? Arms Master questioned not even willing to look at the founders. Narwhal answered that they slipped up when I saw the reluctance of Atrus and Pandora to interact with anything the PRT or the Protectorate had to do with. I asked them yesterday if I could make amends as I didn't want them to perceive the largest hero organization in a bad way she sighed and carried on. They then asked the guild to gather at my office as they sat and explained how we got our powers, just how powerful the race of entities is what was Cauldron and how they have been trying to save all of the Earths by destroying us all from behind the scenes she gritted her teeth as she finished. Save us? They are responsible for the S9, hell the number man is the harbinger, 
that bastard didn't get anything coming his way for being a part of those monsters, the Siberian was the William Manton, the guy who was supposed to be an expert in parahumans was cannibalizing people on streets because he couldn't save his daughter. Bastion shouted in anger. You took me in as one of the inaugural wards, taught me everything about how to be a hero while pulling this shit behind us hey? Did you know what those monster did to me? They ruined lives all across the country and you allowed them. Just for a few more capes. Mouse Protector shouted as tears fell from her eyes as she remembered her torture and the heads of the family the S9 killed to draw her out. Many more people shouted out curses as Idolan and Alexandria looked at the people they worked with throughout their lives, counted to have their backs on during Endbringer fights look at them with such loathing that it hurt inside. Merton asked in a tired tone we've been friends for so long Alexandria. Just what happened to make you take this path? Did you forget how much you cried when Hero was killed by the Siberian? How could you knowingly let such monster out loose? Alexandria looked to the floor as the crowd quietened to hear her response You all know just what kind of a threat the enemy truly posed to all of humanity, we felt that we needed to take the harder choices even if it meant dealing with monsters like Grey Boy and Manton if we could take the enemy down she said in soft tone as she slumped his shoulders. Chevalier looked at Legend who was covering his face with his palms, you really didn't know Legend? About all this, he asked one of his only remaining idols who hadn't broken his trust. No, I always knew that Alexandria and Idolan did something in secret but I was too scared to find out what was going on. After Hero's death everything changed so much that I felt whatever they did, they did for the best he whispered out loud as his own tears fell to the ground. Call Dr. Mother and rest of your associates from Cauldron, I'll ask the drone to allow them access, I want to see this Contessa that you all put your hopes in Narwhal said to Alexandria who simply nodded quietly. Don't try to run, the drone will be following you and will subdue you if it looks like you're about to take off she remarked as the dimensional force field came down and Alexandria muttered. Door to Cauldron compound and a yellow portal appeared before them all through which Alexandria stepped in. Pandora's drone spilt itself in two as a drone hijacked the portal and forcefully kept it open and the other followed her inside. A few moments later Dr. Mother, the number man, Contessa, door maker, and clairvoyant followed Alexandria outside the portal to the gathering of heroes. All the parahumans were tagged by the drone with a piece of itself which depowered them all. Dr. Mother looked in shock, not believing that a secret like this had been released to the world. The heroes looked at the group in hatred as they stepped out, as the cauldron capes looked at the group with confused feelings. Once Dr. Mother was told by Alexandria that the existence of enemy alongside cauldron was revealed, she couldn't help but ask how did Atrus and Pandora find out, in a defeated tone. Dragon shook her head, you underestimate just how powerful Pandora truly is. They come from a world much superior to ours as long as there is technology available she is as close to omniscient as anybody gets. You need an AI closer to her power to protect your data which is impossible here she paused as the others looked frightened at the thought. They searched through every single database to find clues on how to leave our world. After knowing of your existence they were conflicted about what to do with you, Atrus didn't even retaliate when you sent out C-53S to try and kill him and left it to us she stopped. He said that this was an internal matter between the heroes of this world, and that we had to take care of our own problems Narwhal said with a straight face as the heroes reluctantly nodded understanding what he meant. And just what were we supposed to do? You saw the files on the enemy, he is unbeatable in a straight fight. We needed more parahumans to even stand a chance against him Dr. Mother exclaimed. You could have gone about it in another way. You're not a parahuman so you don't understand just what a trigger event means to us. Having powers thrust upon broken people only twists their minds further, that is without the meddling of the goddamned shards changing our brains. Why do you think there are so many more villains than heroes? You think they'll show up to fight an unkillable threat? Lady Photon shouted and asked incredulously. The Golden Man, we need to talk about him. Can we really deal with something like this? 
Raim asked in a quiet tone the loss of life against him is going to be catastrophic if he starts killing us all now she finished as the mood of the gathered fell. Atrus and Pandora promised that they will deal with him, they have known about his true nature since the beginning and have been preparing to put him down for a while now, Atrus told me yesterday that after the S-class threats, he will only help with Endbringers and the entity from now on, we will have to deal with any other villains on our own Narwhal said with an assured tone. He doesn't want us depending on him for everything, and he made it clear that he wants to explore this universe and might not stay here for a long time, so he wants us to deal with our own troubles Dragon elaborated to the other. And how will the two of them deal with the enemy? Dr. Mother asked skeptically. Let's ask Pandora herself said Narwhal turning to the drone flying above having recreated the dimensional force field, Pandora, could you please explain to us how you and Atrus will deal with Sion? she asked to which the drone projected a hologram which looked like Pandora was in the room for real. Greeting to everybody gathered here, please do not worry about the warrior entity. I have been searching for the dimension that hold his true body from which he is spreading throughout different realities, once that is found we have a plethora of weapons we can use to kill him permanently she said with a smile. Although the thinker entity's death was a stroke of luck it shows you that once past their defenses this race is just as vulnerable to death as any other she paused as the others realized what she meant. The only problem is their sheer size which can be difficult to hurt and the dimension in which they reside in can be hard to track, but if those conditions are fulfilled then killing an entity is not hard for me or for Atrus, quite honestly neither it would be for you she remarked. The heroes were looking at her incredulously wanting an answer. It was Contessa who asked softly what do you mean? We can kill the enemy without much loss, she wanted the answer to that question desperately. Pandora looked at her in pity this cycle was thrown off course with your help, many vital shards that would never be given to any host were given out by Zion. The ward named Fleshette in New York posses the Sting Shard, which is the primary method with which entities fight amongst themselves it can pierce any physical defense and strike its target. You have a whole cluster of them who triggered with similar powers, you could use any of the all-or-nothing abilities to strike at his true body after using Doormaker and Clairvoyant to find where his true body is, using a combat thinker to help the group battle in a streamline fashion while other defend these hard hitters from Zion's avatar she paused. Of course lives would be lost even with this, but you would have saved a lot more people than you would have before. The problem with you is Contessa that you have begun depending on your shard for every single thing. The shard only cares for logic, it doesn't do emotions, which make up a very core component of humans. All your powers were meant to warp your personalities to encourage conflict, other than the dead shards of Eden which warp the body instead she finished as the cauldron members looked conflicted at her answer. Well, my job here is done. I've started the knowledge exchange and it had been going smoothly, Atrus has killed the sleeper using a move of his which he wants to use against Zion which was successful as well. I'll let you all carry on with your meeting, farewell she wished as the hologram disappeared and the hall was filled with silence. After a few minutes Miss Militia asked now what do we do, in a tired voice, the meeting so far having drained everybody's energy. First things first the triumvirate need to step down from the leadership positions, even the PRT1 in case of Alexandria and other heroes need to take up the mantle Narwhal said sternly to which everybody nodded. Legend nodded as he said it was a failure at my part that I didn't want to see the truth of what my friends were doing, I stepped down from my position effective immediately. I hope I can still be allowed to serve the protectorate to help make up for my mistakes he finished bowing down to everyone in the room. We need more heroes now more than ever, the S-classes may have been wiped out by Atrus but the villains are still around. The Triumvirate and the members of the Cauldron must work with this new protectorate who help right their wrongs and to actually make a difference in the world, not just maintaining the status quo Merton stated to which everybody agreed reluctantly, not liking the Cauldron members amongst their ranks. Once we have dealt with the threats of our world they will face the consequences of their actions. I assure everybody here Narwhal stated firmly. The things they have done is extremely abhorrent, but in the immediate future we need their powers, once that is done they will face justice she finished as everybody felt more reassured. 
I hope that the independent teams and heroes can work alongside the Protectorate not only for coordination but also to show everybody that we are holding a united front against the villains, and the independents have the overall support of the Protectorate Chevalier added gaining agreements and thankful nods from the independent heroes. The Cauldron Capes will have to undergo some testing to assure us that what you did was out of fear of retaliation from the organization and not to disrupt the peace and structure of the Protectorate Rhyme said coldly looking at the Cauldron Capes whose identities were revealed in the data pad. They all nodded remorsefully, knowing that they would have to earn the trust of their colleagues again. And the agent's cauldron placed in terms of villains need to go, the ones like this coil from Brockton Bay need to be birdcaged right away. Psychopaths the lot of them Narwhal stated coldly as the everybody agreed. Arms Master wanted to take his halberd and run it through Thomas Calvert for fooling them for so long, as soon as he and his team gets back Calvert was number one on their hit list. We have inadvertently created or branded many people as villains, something that I feel like slapping myself to allow to happen looking back now. We must make amends for all the problems we have caused in public to let them know we are serious about this. We can even reach out to the small-time villains and come to some kind of an understanding if just talk to them Dragon said with wistful tone thinking about the ongoing farce of a case Canary was being put through. She had already searched a good lawyer for her and was doing her best to make amends for all the public backlash she was receiving due to false rumors. The other heroes too looked shamefaced as they thought back to situations where they could have helped another cape from being branded a villain but didn't want to shake the system too much. Slowly but surely people started pitching in ideas on what changes to make and how to help make their world a better place by their own hands without waiting for someone else to save them. Better days were coming for the people of Earth Bet in many ways and the heroes were starting to behave like heroes that people always think of when looking at the Protectorate. Alexandria had a regretful look when saw so many people come together to make things right for all the mistakes they made. We really messed up didn't we? Thinking that we were saving them, all we did was damn them more Idolan whispered looking at his colleague and friends talk with enthusiasm about what they could help with. Yeah, I wish hero. Peter could see this. This is what he saw the protectorate becoming when we first thought of a making hero group, his vision has lived one even though we tainted it as much as we did she said quietly seeing things change so rapidly in front of her. We will make up for our mistakes legend called out from behind them with a firm We will make up for our mistakes legend called out from behind them with a firm tone I was too scared to know what you both were involved in and took the easy way out but not anymore It is time they chose the path they wanted to take without us interfering with them It is our turn now follow their lead and fix all our wrongs Together he stated as his friends nodded along with him. Thanks for watching.